Hey guys, I just wanted to go over some charging issues here with the Tesla Model 3. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the seat heat for my morning drive and turn off the climate so that it's not blowing. And uh, that was just sitting here running. So I'm at 54% charge. Um, I did a bunch of driving this weekend. Uh, I'm using the Test Lab app as well as the regular Tesla app to track my trips and so on. And they said that I made like nine trips this weekend. So I've actually been uh, taking the car out to drive whenever I get a chance to do it. And it's just been a lot of fun. So I didn't charge it at home. I didn't take the charger home. I'm actually in my work garage. I have a garage here, a personal garage at my office. And we are at 54% charged right now. I've got it set to display the uh, percentage rather than the miles. If you go under uh, the driving button here, so distance, and then we'll go back, and we're at 169 miles. So uh, still lots of range after driving it all weekend. Um, that's going to equate to um, probably over the um, expected range of the car, so I'm pretty happy about that. Getting back to the drive and display and energy. So we've got 54% charge, and the time right now is 8.53. And what I'm doing is just testing if I can have 110 or 120 volt charging. I'm getting on average about 117 or 118 volts here out of my wall socket. And it's coming out at about 15 to 20 amps uh, as far as what the circuit is rated. And I think the car is only pulling 12 amps for safety, so that will be displayed down here. But I'm going to see if we can use essentially a regular wall outlet for charging the car and if that will meet my daily needs. So I'm pretty sure that it will because I was getting last week about 5 miles per hour of charging. My commute is only about 20 or 25 miles, so it's no problem charging that up just once a day here at work. And I'm able to use the work power for charging. I do on the company, so I'm not cheating the, the company out of electricity, but um, I, I just can charge it here at my office. I did plan to put in a NEMA 1450 uh, charger to do fast charging here, but I don't even know if I'm going to want to spend the money on that since it looks like possibly the regular outlet's going to work. And then I may put a fast charger outside uh, for the uh, shared charging network. All right, we'll see how it goes. So now we're back in the car, and it's saying we're going to have 22 hours, 15 minutes to get up to the 80% line, which is right there. And that's an estimate based on what it's drawing right now. So I just switched it back to the distance mode, which shows the 169 miles. And instead of showing that it's drawing one kilowatt, it shows that it's doing four miles per hour and uh, 12 amps at 119 volts. So we'll see if that estimate of 22 hours, 19 minutes, 20 hours, 15 minutes changes. It just did. Um, depending on how much it's able to ramp up the draw, it will kind of ramp it up as the charge gets going. So we'll see how it goes for the day. I'm just going to leave this charged in during the workday and we'll see how we, we're at. We'll see where we're at at the end of the workday and see how many miles we've put on. Okay guys, we've had a long day at work and it is now 6 p.m. And uh, it's 77 degrees in the vehicle and 72 outside of it. So I assume we're getting a little bit of heat from the batteries uh, with the charging as it's just sitting in a garage here. Um, I don't necessarily feel like the floor is warm, but I'm sure the batteries are making some heat. So uh, it says that we now have 13 hours, 15 minutes left to charge. To completion at the set point of about 80 percent. I'll change it over to actual kilowatts in a moment, but now it's on miles. We have 209 miles of range. I just wanted to show that it's uh, charging at four miles per hour. Much of the day it was uh, displaying that it was charging at five miles per hour, probably because I got into the car and it woke up. That slowed down a little bit. And uh, it says plus 40 miles, 
So I assume that number there must be since our last charge. Five miles per hour times about eight or nine hours at work would probably give us about 40 miles. And that's 12 amps. We're getting 118 volts here. And I think that's a function of the uh, voltage drop from the utility power. So basically the transformer over to um, into the building and out to where the receptacle is. So that can range anywhere from 110 to 120 roughly speaking, and, I'm, and it looks like we have, okay, jumping up to 119 a little bit, so we have good line voltage here. And of course we can change how many amps we're drawing here. And the max right now in this circuit is 12 amps. So I'll go ahead and switch over now to display in energy. to the charge. All right, so displaying an energy, we're at 67%, and we're drawing one kilowatt. That must be sort of a rounded number because 12 amps times 118 volts, we should be around 1,450, then it's 119, 1,450 to 1,500 uh, watts. But that says one kilowatt. And we've added 10 kilowatt hours, so 1 kilowatt per hour times 10. Well, that's about maybe 1.4 times about 8 or 9 hours here. So we're up to 67% charge. And uh, we'll go ahead and just charge it on this circuit while I'm at work this week. Probably what's going to happen is if I just charge it at work, and then on the weekends I drive it around and deplete it without charging it at home, um, it's going to take a good chunk of the week to really catch up. It'll probably take another couple days to catch up because I'm able to charge more than my commute sitting here at work all day. And uh, this should be perfectly adequate if I'm always charging at work that it should be regenerated every day and should make up for the loss on the weekend. Of course, I could take it home and charge it at home as well, but I'm wanting to use my uh, workplace power to charge this. And that cost me less. So there we go. Hope this is helpful and hope you can see that if you have a typical smaller commute uh, that charging with 110 volts is perfectly adequate. So guys, I'm back home again. I think I changed my mind. I think I'm going to charge here at home, although in the future I'll probably just do it at work. I want to uh, try getting this car up to 100% so I can see what the 100% range is. It says 63% charge right now. And uh, I looked at the Teslab app, and it looks like I drove uh, 11 and a half miles and only used 10 and a half miles worth of charge, so 108% efficiency. And uh, we're at 63%, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. If you are doing 110 volt power, you may just want to leave it plugged in uh, all the time that you're not using the car, just like you would plug your phone in at night. So let's see how it does in the morning. Well, hey guys, good morning. Um, We've had the car plugged in all night. This is uh, after a whole weekend of not charging it on top of it being depleted from when I purchased it. I never did fully charge it. And uh, drove it all weekend without charging up and then uh, went to work yesterday. Plugged it in while I was at work. Came home, plugged it in, and it uh, was plugged in all night. And now we're up to 82%. And you can take note that we're making up here for a weekend of not charging it. And uh, most people would have just left it plugged in all weekend, probably, and be fully charged at this point. But I'm just showing that we can fully recover um, all the battery charge we need for commuting, as well as additional charge banked up for the week, with the worst case scenario, which is plugged into a regular 515, uh, NEMA 515 outlet, just your regular lamp socket type outlet. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll drive over to work and then we'll plug it again in. Okay guys, back at work, and we're at 77%, so we use 5% of the charge on the commute into work. And um, we'll go ahead and get it started charging. Okay guys, we've got our plugged in and charging, and uh, we are drawing 12 amps at 119 volts. It's over a kilowatt that it shows there. And uh, 6 hours and 50 minutes, I've got the charge set at the maximum day trip level. So that's either 80 or 90 percent, but it'll charge up while I'm at work to the full uh, capacity there, uh, no problem. 
Okay guys, it's the end of the work day. It's uh, 546. About 538 is when the car reached full charge of 90%. So 90% is what it has set here when you set the limit, uh, what they call the, the top there of the daily charge recommendation. So you're not supposed to fully top it off. Um, you can go up to 90%. You'd go up to 100% if you wanted to do a long trip. So plugged in all day. It reached the 90% mode, and this is the first time I've had it fully charged to some kind of a limit. So it's right now at, still plugged in, but it's at 0 out of 12 amps, so it's really not drawing anything. It says 2 volts there. That's probably just monitoring the cord is in. So I thought I would uh, make a few adjustments here concerning climate control. So say I, it was hot out and I wanted to, to pre-adjust the environment to have the car cool when I got in. So let's take a look at that. See how many amps it draws. So we're down, we're up 9, 10, 12 amps, so it's drawing a full 12 amps now, a full kilowatt to run the air conditioner. One thing I noticed is right here in the front of the car there are some little louvers that actually block off the intake of the lower part of the bumper that that essentially is where the grill is and that grill is for the climate control and the batteries so that actually has closed louvers but when you have it plugged in and charging it opens those louvers up for cooling the battery system so it's kind of neat you can see that apparently there are fans in there that can get going quite loud if the car is charging in the heat and needs to really cool the battery system so we're pulling the full one kilowatt plus here just running the air conditioner So I'm going to try putting this on heat. I hear some kind of rumbling sounds. I don't know why there's kind of a vibration in this deep rumbling sound, whether it's circulating fluid through the batteries or what it's doing. It's getting quite warm in here now. That sound is shut off. I'll try um, heating. I'll try charging it up fully tonight. I got my new adapter here from Tesla today. It came in the mail, and this is the NEMA 1430 adapter for your standard dryer outlet. I'm mean, gonna use that at home to charge it up faster, and we'll put that in, later in the video. All right, check in with you guys later. Okay, just to add on a little bit here, um, I had the heat up on max and I actually turned the heated seats on and then it uh, jumped up to 15 minutes remaining to hit the 90% charge. So I believe that means that it actually used some of the battery for conditioning the cabin since I had so many things on. Now it's back in charging mode, it's pulling 12 amps and uh, probably 1450 or so watts. And it looks like it did slightly deplete the battery and snaps the top off a little more. So I'm back home again. I charged it up to about 91% as I was getting ready to leave there. And then I've lost about 2% coming home. So I did a little uh, trip home with my daughter. And we did some fast accelerations and playing around with the car a little bit. So I probably wasn't extremely efficient. But we're down to 89%. And we're going to plug it in here at home. I have my new adapter that came in today from Tesla, which is that... Uh, 1430 I was going to show you so we'll get that plugged in and we'll see how it does okay so we've got the charger and this is the uh, mobile charge unit with the regular 100, 110 120 volt outlet uh, 15 amp adapter here and we're gonna use my new adapter for the NEMA 1430 okay here's my NEMA 1430 outlet and it looks like at least as far as this Tesla adapter is concerned it's upside down or that of the Tesla's on back adapters on backwards so we will plug it in there the cord will be kind of sticking up Get hold that there okay and then this actually has to go in this way where it's not going to hang naturally that way but I will uh, switch that around probably tonight and then you can okay hold the cord there 
Right, now what we do is we just press this little button right here. The door opens and you see the light. Just plug that in and then this blinks. It'll actually blink faster the more depleted the charge. So it's blinking relatively slowly right now. And let's go see what shows on the dash. There's the NEMA 515 where I was plugging it in. Which is a 15 amp circuit. And then glad I had this installed in this house when I built it. Uh, 30 amp 220 volt. That's the breaker for this NEMA 1430 outlet. And I'll turn that around so this Tesla cord hangs better with a little less distress on it. And uh, I do like those rolling lights there. So whenever you're working on anything electrical, do yourself and your wife and your kids a favor. Make sure you never work on a live circuit. Got my breaker turned off there. Even though I'm not really doing any wiring, I'm just changing this uh, outlet around. Uh, you know, you could have an accident. So say you're working on this and, oh, you slip. There you go. Electrocution. So uh, I would have to always say a disclaimer on a YouTube video. Don't do this unless you're a qualified electrician. And I just turned that outlet around in the box. Okay, so here we are, and it looks like we have already 6,000 watts, 6kW here, 24 amps at 240, 39, 240 volts. And then we can adjust here, uh, I thought we were going to get more like 30 amps, but actually with a 30 amp circuit, you saw the 30 amp breaker, it automatically gives a little bit of leeway. You don't want to charge... 30 amp may be the limit, but you don't want to charge it that long term or it'll heat up the wiring. So 24 amps looks like it's as high as it's going to go. We can scroll it down or up there, but the most we're going to get with this NEMA 1430 is a 24 amp charge, and that's about 6,000 watts. So to get up to 100%, we have only 2 hours and 25 minutes. And if we go back to saying we want to be back at the 90% range, it's only going to take 15 minutes to uh, restore everything lost in my commute. Oh, we got 241 volts there. That's fantastic. That's good wiring. It's running at, uh, these circuits can be 220 to 240, but it's running at 241 because it's so close to the breaker over there and to the source. So there's really no line voltage drop. The farther you are, um, as far as wiring through your house to your plug, the more line voltage drop you have. So there is some leeway for the voltage to drop, even down to 220. But got 24 amps times 241, 240 volts. So let's go ahead and never charge this completely. So I'm going to go ahead and charge it all the way up tonight and see how it does. Okay, so there's the Tesla mobile connector plugged in, and uh, everything is lit up nicely. And it's hanging much uh, better there. And got her plugged in. So guys, hopefully that has been helpful for you. Um, we've had a few days here of charging with a regular uh, 515 outlet and uh, 12 amps. And it sure needs to be plugged in a lot when you use that, but it's very doable for probably most commuters. And now I'm going to go ahead and start using my 1430 charger and uh, we'll get things charged up a lot quicker.